Hello everybody, Jonathan Pulley here with West Coast Weather. Today is October 22nd. In this video, we're going to um, take a quick look at the system that's kind of diving into California right now. And then we're going to take a look at the next system and associate cold and even Arctic air that's going to move down over the Pacific Northwest. Models have come into a greater agreement on what exactly is going to happen. There's still some things we still need to pinpoint, but we really won't get fixed details like that until the event is almost starting. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. Right now we're looking at the GOES-18 satellite imagery. Here's British Columbia up here. Here's Alaska up here. Here's Washington, Oregon, California. And right now there's a upper level low that's starting to dive in the California right now, bringing some widespread rain showers and some possible rumbles of thunder down there. Some low clouds are hanging in over lots of western Washington, Oregon. That should clear up at least somewhat in the next couple hours. And that should lead to some sun breaks here this afternoon and evening. And then up here, you can see the cold air that's starting to build up. That's going to start making its way down into the southern British Columbia and eventually into Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana. This is this is Arctic air from up, up way up north. It's been building up the last few weeks and it's going to enter into the area and bring some pretty active weather this coming week. And we're going to take a look at the details right now. So first, let's take a look at the wide view of things. This is the European model. And this is this morning's run. So we got the newest data we have possible right now. And you see this cold air that associated with the trough that's building up over northern British Columbia. And you can see the upper level low that's bringing some storminess down the California and some cooler weather. As we go into Monday, this trough starts building right over the over British Columbia and right off the coast. And watch as this little appendage comes out over the coastline. It drifts right and opens up this bowling ball of a trough right over Washington and Oregon. This is kind of the perfect setup to get some cold air and lots of precipitation to the area. This is happening in October, though, so we're not really expecting any snow in the low elevations. But plentiful mountain snow will be likely with this. Excuse me. And so if this were to happen like December or January, we would be probably talking about a pretty cold uh, weather pattern with probably plenty of snow to even down the sea level. But it's just too early in the year and the, the ground temperatures are too warm. The w water temperatures are also too warm. So there's a lot of things working against snow to the surface. As we go into Wednesday, this trough kind of just stays right over the Washington, Oregon, keeps the cold air coming in. And then you can see this little swing right there. If you look closely, you can see this little swing in the trough. And it looks like we get another little punch of cold air on Thursday. That may bring another weak system and generate some pretty strong outflow winds out of the Fraser River Valley up in southwest BC. And that'll bring some possible strong winds to the Whatcom County and San Juan Island areas, including Bellingham and Victoria. That will also bring down the temperatures in those areas, too. This is pretty a, a pretty dynamic cold system for this time of the year, which is why we're not going to be getting a lot of snow with this down to the low elevations or really any at this point, unless it, everything works out perfectly to get the enough cold air down to the surface. But lots of mountain snows and of some uh, lots of beneficial precipitation to some of the drought conditions over the Cascades. And as we head later in the week and the next weekend, it looks like the ridge builds in. And we're still in this cool pattern because we got this ridge. It's not really over us. It's up in Alaska. So we have this cold, cool northeast flow that kind of goes over the Pacific Northwest. And it's going to keep us chilly for a while. And the models are all hinting at some maybe some Gulf of Alaska troughs and more Pacific warm systems coming into the area later next week. But there's still a lot of time to look at that, and we'll check on that next week. And if we take a closer look at that trough, the trough today that's moving over California in the upcoming cold trough right over the Pacific Northwest, this is kind of a perfect trajectory for to get cold air and active weather here in the Pacific Northwest. And that's why we're focusing on it so much. And then you can see that little secondary swing as well right there. And this is taking a look at, so this is the last night's European model run. And this is this morning. This shows, this kind of gives us a good perspective on how 
the models are changing a good bit, even though it's only a few, this event's only a few days away. And if we keep, if we go into, this is about Monday, you can see pretty good agreement, both the models. And then they're really in good agreement, really, but there's some subtle differences that we're looking at. Look at, if you look over here, the trough is slightly weaker. This, this morning's model, uh, European model, actually strengthened the trough a little more, which would allow more, even colder air to get into the area. So some models are, have been uptrending even more on the cold air and thus more active weather here in Washington, Oregon. And then that swings through. And then that this last night's model run can only goes at 90 hours. This, so now we're looking at the European ensemble mean. So this takes a, a, into account all 50 ensemble members and averages them all out to give us a better idea of what we're dealing with. So this is not like cherry picking anything. This is like all, all 50 of the different little models it, called ensembles. And when you put them all together, they give you the average of what this, this is the mean, which is just the average. And you can see the very good agreement on the troughing coming over the Pacific Northwest. And if we take a look at the difference between the last two model runs, look at this. The, the, the new ensemble this morning is actually stronger than last night. So there's good agreement that we're going to get plenty of cold air into the area. So now let's take a look at the GFS. And good agreement in the short term. And you can see it also brings that trough right over the area. Pretty similar strength, maybe slightly weaker, but the GFS has actually been handling this pretty well. It's kind of the European model was not really agreeing with it, and then it kind of came into the agreement with the GFS. Usually it's the other way around. The GFS starts agreeing with the European model, but not this time. And then it also kind of shows that secondary swing right now. It's not as strong, so that wouldn't really bring as much impact as the European model was showing for later this week. But now let's look at when we may see the precipitation arrive. You can see the showers and stuff over California, maybe some isolated uh, light showers over wa parts of Washington, Oregon. We kind of dry out all of Monday, but watch as the system starts developing right off the coast. It's kind of... it's in and it swings the moisture right into the area. There's almost a sort of an atmospheric river feature with this, but it's going to be moving relatively fast out of the area, so we don't have to worry about that. But look, this precipitation stays over the area for quite a while, and it's pretty, it's a decent amount of precipitation, and it kind of meanders. And then at the, in the last few days, a couple of days ago, the European model had this big atmospheric river sitting over the area for a couple of days, keeping us warmer. But now the European model is agreeing with the colder air coming in, so it kind of moves all the precipitation out relatively fast. And if we can look, we look on Thursday, you can see that little secondary system that some models are picking up on. That may bring some more pre precipitation into some of the areas and more amount of snows. And here's the GFS, similar in the short term as to be expected. And then the system develops right over the area, pretty similar to the European model also. And it looks like there's going to be some sort of convergent band that forms over northwest Washington. So around Island County, Woodby Island area, the San Juans, Whatcom County, Skagit County, Snohomish County. This may enhance some precipitation tolls. And it could bring some cooler air from up above and drag some of that cold air down. And that may bring some maybe some snowflakes mixed into like high hills around the Puget Sound. That is a possibility. But Everything needs to work out perfectly for something like that to happen. So it's we don't really have any confidence in that. So now let's take a look at the total precipitation we may expect. This is the European mall. These are the precipitation tolls from the showers earlier today. And there, there may be a convergence zone late Monday evening over parts of Snohomish, Skagit, and maybe Island County as well. Maybe some light rain with that, but that's going to be associated with a westerly surge on the street that I'll talk about here in a few moments. And then here's the system coming. This is total precipitation. So this by Wednesday morning, look at this. Yellow is over an inch of precipitation. And the, the European model is showing this band up in northwest Washington really bringing like one to two inches to some areas. I'm not sure if this is exactly going to set up like this, but if it does, there's some substantial precipitation. And if this was in December, and we had even colder air. This could be a con like convergent zone with snow and bring some very heavy snow to places. But the, it's October, so we don't have cold enough temperatures for that. But heavy precipitation, but all this precipitation in the mountains that should be, should be mostly in the form of snow. And some snow may get down to the passes, so be careful if you're 
heading out east or coming into the western parts of the state from Tuesday through probably Friday is probably going to be the best time. And then you can see some more have some more precipitation until starting to build up Thursday as that possible second system starts moving in May. It looks like it adds a decent more tolls to parts of Oregon as well, even some of eastern Washington and eastern Oregon getting in on that. Some of eastern Washington could get low elevation snow. Could get, it, it just depends on exactly how much cold air goes comes into the area. And now let's look at the GFS toll precipitation. Here, these are the showers today, maybe converting sun to Monday night. Here's that system coming. It also has that band up north as well by by Wednesday morning with one to one and a half inches. It shows a bigger rain shower right here, but really this is going to be spotty showers, so it's going to make it really hard for us to know exactly where the heaviest precipitation. But there's a chance somewhere in western Washington it's going to get a heavier band of precipitation and lead to maybe over an inch of rain. And then let's see if it has a second. It doesn't really have that second system because this is by Saturday and there wasn't anything climbing up as much. All right, so now this is the National Weather Service uh, Seattle slash Tacoma. There's a gale watch for the Strait of Juan de Fuca, which probably will be extended into the eastern Strait of Juan de Fuca as well. And then probably some small craft advisories may be issued for the northern inland waters in Admiralty Inlet as a westerly wind gets pushed in there. Let's look at the exact details of this gale watch. So this is from this is remain to effect from Monday afternoon through Monday evening. West winds 20 to 30 knots gusting the 35 knots possible for the this is for the central U.S. waters straight on the Fuga. This probably could be extended into the eastern Strait of Juan de Fuca as well, and it will probably affect parts of Whidbey Island. And strong winds can cause hazardous seas, which could capsize or damage vessels and reduce visibility. So any small craft that are out there probably should go in the port or change their plans Monday evening because you do not want to be caught up in those, uh, those winds and waves. So now let's take a look at that. This is the HRRR. This just updated very recently. This is early Monday morning. You can see the westerly winds starting to come out because there's this west to, west to east pressure gradient that's going to form over the Cascades and it's going to push all the air east. This is before the system on Tuesday that's going to bring in the precipitation. So you can see it by Monday afternoon. You can see gusts 30 to the 40 mile. The greens are 30 to the 40 mile per hour wind gusts. They're coming down the straight, so maybe some localized power outages on Whidbey are possible with gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour. The, G, the HRRR actually brings some wind gusts up towards 45 miles per hour. The HRRR sometimes overdoes these, though, a bit. So, And then some um, stronger winds over the Cascades and the, the Columbia River um, Basin may get some gusts up towards 50 in some of the higher elevations, so be careful if you're out there in the backcountry. And then the westerly winds kind of die off in the street as the pressure gradient lifts up. This is by around like 7 to 8 p.m. Monday evening. It's going to remain breezy through the night, though. Wind gusts still maybe some up to 60 for some of these isolated places up in the Cascades. But just be careful if you're out there. And that eventually all of it kind of lets up by Tuesday morning before the next system starts rolling. The, the main system starts rolling in. So now this is the National Blend of Models. This is kind of a mix of multiple of the main models. So this is the daily max two meter temperature. So this is basically high temperatures. This is for Monday. This is Monday's high temperatures. So may, parts of the Puget, most of the Puget Sound probably won't get out of the 50s on Monday. So jet, definitely chillier weather. But you can see the really cold air that's starting to be banked up against the Cascades up north. As we end the Tuesday, look at this. 50, a high of 50 for Seattle, that's downright chilly, especially for this time of the year. And only 50 is for the Willamette Valley as well. Still warm in the, uh, California as the cold air hasn't made it down there yet. So 70s to maybe 80 degrees possible for some of the central valleys down there. Wednesday, maybe not even getting out of 50 for Seattle. 30, uh, maybe staying in the 30s for Spokane, very cold air. And then we, as we head in the Friday, it, the cold air just really remains settled over the area. And then, yeah, it stays, maybe warms up a bit later next week, but there's a lot of time to look at that. Now let's look at low temperatures, daily low temperatures. This is low temperatures Monday. Look at low temperatures in the 30s for eastern Washington and parts of eastern Oregon as well. 
40s and 50 40s and 50s for western washington oregon this weekend the tuesday look at this lows getting to near freezing for spokane the first hard freeze of the season is likely for eastern oregon idaho eastern washington so be sure to protect your plants out there and look at lows getting into the low 40s maybe upper 30s for parts of western washington and oregon by tuesday Look at what by Wednesday as the cold air really starts coming there, free like almost getting close to freezing for some of the places in Western Washington. Low the mid thirties, the upper thirties are going to be possible. And by Thursday, look at this temperatures getting to near freezing. This is we're probably going to likely get our first frost for many locations in Western Washington, maybe Western Oregon, but they're going to be kind of a little further away from the cold air, and. Look at this. By Saturday, the national blend of malt. This is the average, by the way. It could be colder than this. Brings Spokane down to 18 degrees Fahrenheit by Saturday. Low temperature of 35 near Seattle. So that means the rural areas around that are likely to get the freezing. Parts of southwest Washington maybe in the upper 20s. Third, uh, freezing near freezing around Portland as well. So very cold air for this time of the year. First freeze and it, it kind of really remains and then we start warming back up a bit later next week but we'll watch that and then so this is the european model this is two meter temperature anomaly from normal so the yellows and reds are above normal temperatures blues and greens and purples are below normal so kind of above average now but as we head in the monday you can see the cold air starting to move down as we head in the tuesday blues and greens starting to pop up over washington but look at this over Montana as we head into Wednesday. Look at this. Temperatures maybe 20 to 30 degrees below average for Montana. Very cold air. And plenty of West, uh, Washington, Oregon below uh, over uh, 10 degrees below average. As we head in the Thursday, look at over 10 degrees below average for parts of the Puget Sound stuff. So that's why we're expecting our likely first freeze of the season is because of this such cold air and if we were if we were talking 10 degrees below average in december we would be talking temperatures well into the 20s for parts of western washington oregon so this just put, puts into the perspective if you get a cold air blast in october versus during the winter time and then this really just remains over there look at this look at montana this model is showing up places, some places maybe getting the near 40 degrees below average. That's just incredible. Some tem temperatures getting into the single digits are likely for parts of Montana. The higher elevation probably getting into the negatives. Even California getting onto the action. Some places near Redding getting the 10 to 20 degrees below average. Just the cold air really just banks up over there and it really just remains through next early next week, possibly. So this is going to be the main story for quite a while. So now what, what a lot of people are wanting to know is how much snow may the mountains get? So this is total snowfall Kuchera ratio. So there's two different ratios of snow. There's the 10 to 1 ratio, which is just kind of the average one. 10 inches of snow equals 1 inch of rain. And then the Kuchera ratio kind of puts into account what temperature the snow is going to be falling at. So warmer temperatures are going to have less snow than colder temperatures because the snow is more dense at warmer temperatures. And this through Wednesday, at, look at this. Some places in the Cascades may be getting over 20 inches of snow. Some of the passes may, may be getting 6 to 12 inches of snow. So be very careful and bring and it chains and good traction tires if you're going to be going over the passes mid around midweek. Even some of the Olympic Mountains, look at Montana just getting socked in with snow over there. Winter Wonderland kind of expected over there. Look at this. Some places over there may be getting over 40 inches in the higher ele elevations of parts of Wyoming. This is some pretty incredible stuff for this time of the year. So in this now this is the Bellingham International Airport. This is the, all 50 ensemble members of the European model. And you can see that it's actually showing chances of snow for Bellingham. This is likely not going to happen, but there is a chance if everything works out perfectly and the cold air comes at the right time and the precipitation lasts through the night when the temperatures are the coldest, we may get some snowflakes in the air. And even the the, the average is around a half an inch of snow. The ground's really warm, so nothing would really accumulate. But it just shows how um, 
impressive this cold air blast is for this time of the year. Now let's look down to see how the European Ensemble even has some, some models even had almost near six inches of snow for Seattle. This would be the earliest snow ever recorded in Seattle. I'm pretty sure the earliest snow ever recorded was back in the, the 1900s, and that was around October 27th, I believe. Don't, don't, don't check me on that, but yeah, so this is, it just shows that this cold air is, means business. We're likely not to get snow down to sea, sea service or even down to a couple hundred feet, but if everything works out perfectly, maybe. And now let's, this is the six to 10 day temperature outlook probability. You can really see the bullseye of cold, the Arctic air that's going to start moving over the central and western US. Really, really, that when you get the dark purples, that, that means that the cold air means business. Temperatures getting into the teens likely for parts of North and South Dakota and up there. But if we go down to the six to 10 day precipitation outlook, Usually when we get cold air, that means less precipitation, but we're likely to still, this is for October 20th through November 1st. So this is discounting what's get, that, that maybe an inch or two of precipitation that may fall in some of the lowlands early this week, because um, this, is late, this is later this weekend into early next week. So it's showing below average precipitation for that time of year, but we can also check on this next weekend around probably Sunday or uh, no Friday or Saturday this coming week so we'll check up on that again but until now we'll just leave that as is well that's it for this video I hope everybody enjoyed and found this video informative get your jackets out because the cold air is moving in and maybe your umbrella but here in western Washington we don't really use umbrellas around here but um if you uh, wouldn't mind supporting the channel and just um hitting that like button down below and also hitting the subscribe button. It helps get the, the algorithm to pick up my video and share it with more people, allowing more people to actually view this video. Also hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss out on any of the new videos I may post. That'll give you a notification at the top of your screen on your phone or in the bottom right if you're on your computer when I post my next video. So I hope everybody's having a great weekend and Stay warm. Maybe get um your coat. Maybe get your coat on if you're gonna go outside. Maybe get a blanket and some hot cocoa to sit next to the fire because our first cold air intrusion of the season is coming in. So I'll talk to everybody next time.